week at the racetrack, the teams are always trying to find a way to go faster. And one of my favorite parts of the show is going inside the tech zone, where we give you insight into the latest technologies that equals real tech for real racers. Hi again everybody, Tony Rizzuti for 3 Wide Life, and this week we're in Kannapolis, North Carolina. We have no time to waste, so join me today as we go inside the tech zone. Jackman Rodney Feathers, he uses what we call our three-quarter one-pump jack. What that means is in one pump, it'll bring your jack from all the way down position up to eight three-quarters of an inch. You know, a lot of different stuff goes in a race car, um, from, you know, a tiny aluminum tube to, you know, six and a half inch tubing to, uh, you know, aluminum sheets to steel sheets to titanium sheets. Let me show you what the left front shock will look like off of a bush car at Bristol. Going into one, going through two, coming up out, going down the back stretch. It's going into three, going through four, coming up out of four to the flag stick. Normal per se week. Mondays we have off. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday I'm in the shop. <laughs> I'd much rather be at the racetrack. Take all the information that I've gathered from, from the weekend and get that all on the database and the second day is preparing for the next racetrack. Taking all the data that I get from Goodyear and Chevrolet and previous races and coming up with best case scenarios for the weekend to come. Thursdays we have off again and we fly out at about 5 o'clock and then we're at the racetrack from Friday morning until Sunday evening when we fly back home. The engineers in the tunnel will be looking for all the aerodynamic coefficients, uh, the differences and changes in the forces. They'll be looking for downforce, drag, side force, pitch roll and yaw. The reason we have scale models, and it's a scale model tunnel, is because the cost of a facility having a full scale rolling road is tremendous. We're at wind shear, which is the only full scale rolling wind tunnel in North America. No. So uh, building a rolling road wind tunnel here in, in the Concord, North Carolina area brings uh, wind tunnel technology that was previously really only available to Formula One teams to the NASCAR industry. And today we're in Mooresville, North Carolina. We're at CNR Racing Incorporated South. And this I recognize. This, this is the old school <laughs> transmission that I'm used to. Yep, that, that is old school. Left side, three rail shifter as it was considered, standard of the industry. Um, actually still some versions of it around, but, but it's old school. This came to a single rail is what this is considered now. No rails inside of the mechanism either. Uh, we use something a little bit different than everybody, but it's basically a yoke with a hockey stick, if you will, and it's your selector that rotates your rod into your top cover. So, well, the first thing we do uh, when we show up to these events is uh, our engines are not uh, assembled because we've got we to come and find out what the atmospheric conditions are to figure out what our setup is going to be. You have to have the rear wing just to get, to get the downforce, and then, of course, you have the front wing to counteract the rear wing. The, uh, the car actually, what they're trying to do with these dragsters is they're almost like the front, the rear wheels are trying to drive underneath the front. And I don't, I don't know if you've seen on TV where they bow up in the center of the center, that's really, really what's trying to happen there. 300 laps, that's a marathon for a late model race. And I've seen a lot of these teams bringing in professional pit crews. How big will pit stops be in this race today? Pit stops will be really big. You just need to come in, have a real good clean on pit road, off pit road. A lot of these late model guys are not used to doing pit stops, so you don't want to get in trouble, don't want to knock your fenders off on pit road, but uh, have a good, nice, clean four-tire stop and get back on the track and uh, do all your action on the track. Yeah, Nick Harrison, he's one of the best crew chiefs in the game. He's working with Eddie Mercer here on James Finch's late model, super late model race here at the Snowball Derby. And you just want to keep your passes as close together as you can. It just makes the finished product that much better, and it doesn't let it the metal kind of take off in different directions. It's basically like rolling cookie dough. Follow the line, pull the handle. It looked line. like Bono, though. That was close. Think you got it? How about that? You know, you put some chips on there, a little some salsa. salsa. Today's tech tip deals with furthering your education. Now, if you're a prospective student or maybe you're already going to school and you want to learn about the Formula SAE program, be sure to check in with your engineering department. It's a great resume builder and a good chance to get hands-on experience. All you have to do is check in with them. They're always looking for volunteers to work on those cars. Now that's real tech for real racers.